Welcome back, everybody. To the gauntlet. Alright, we got rid of purple. Uh, okay. Yeah. Queuing up trebuchets. So here's the plan. We're gonna pressure over here. Oh, wait. Trebs. No! No! Wait. They're already gone. Oh. Ready. There are some mammaloots. Oh. Okay, uh, the Coalition have broken through the harbor city of Gibraltar. Let us train a navy uh, straight to the coast and recover it. So, what are the Portuguese doing? Let's go sail over and see what's going down. deal with those bombard cannons okay Oops. hello what do you want what does it say about the Portuguese some of their requirements from what requirements Oh, here it says the Granada capital will store its own damaged buildings. Oh. Yeah, I missed that. Oh. Uh, long time no see, dear niece Isabella. It's relatively large gap in timber. 5,000 wood. Oh, wait. We can totally afford that. <laughs> oh, acting all indignant. Uh, Karak and Archibus. Ready. All right, so this seems like enough to break through for now. Okay. This area is basically getting torn up. I have lots of trebuchets, which feels like a very good idea. Let's just snipe the stock over here. Now, I could go along the coast and go after the last city of Cyan, but I kind of want to just go for green now. It might not make the most sense in the world, but in my mind, it's less about defeating single opponents and more of just reducing the number of areas in which we are attacked.
Ey. Here is Z Army. Oh, that's Ferdinand. To uh, Guadix. Good old Guadix. <laughs> so many siege weapons. Nine trebs, man. Bombard Towers. Well, that is a tricky area to punch through. Go after the production. These guys actually seem to be pretty easy to push through relative to uh, Cordoba or Granada Capital. See, we so rarely get to play Britons, so uh, this is our next best thing. We don't get the one extra range of Yeoman, but we get a much faster fire rate. And considering the difference between 11 and 12 range is pretty minimal, I'll take this any day. I mean, it does matter in, like, multiplayer because it means you can match the range of bombard cannons and you do outrange defensive structures that, you know, aren't, like, Korean towers, uh, Turk bombard towers, or Crenellation castles. Other than those guys, you outrange all the other defensive in the game. I guess we're not really taking over anyone else. Oh yeah, definitely don't want to take over Ferdinand with his uh, two attack paladins. I'm sure they'll get that patch sorted out eventually. One day. Look at these long bowmen firing so fast. The Order of Santiago. Oh, do they have more stuff over here? Can I even... Okay, at the very least I can reach them going around the side near Ferdinand's base. If 
Okay, so while we're crushing these people, I've been giving it some more thought, and a few of you guys pointed out in the comments as to, like, what to do with these videos. Because uh, they leave a bit to be desired as far as content goes, and the views certainly reflect that, and... I don't want to make videos that I, you know, I'm already pretty sure people aren't going to enjoy. I don't think any, any content creator wants to do that. So I think I'm going to do a poll, and the poll could be up by the time you guys see the video. Probably do it like tomorrow afternoon for me. So how exactly you want me to go about these custom campaign videos, if you want me to do custom campaign videos at all. Because I've done a lot of them. I've done a lot of custom campaigns. I have hundreds of custom campaign videos. And I can understand if people are getting kind of sick of them. Like, I know there's always some people who are really into me doing custom campaigns, and I'm, like, really appreciative of that. But unless those people represent, you know, the norm as opposed to an exception, I, I can only do so much. So I'm thinking either editing down the videos into longer segments, like 40 minutes of, like, longer clips, doing real highlights of, like, 20 minutes, or just not doing them at all. Or I guess I could keep doing what I'm doing, but keep, keeping on doing what I'm doing doesn't really... It doesn't really feel like a, a recipe for success. So we'll see, we'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm fine doing whatever. There is no shortage of content for me to make. A lot of the reason I was doing custom campaigns is, one, people enjoyed them, at least they used to enjoy them. And they're also easy for me to make and get churn out in large numbers, right? I just need to play the scenario and ramble through it. But as we saw with State of the Civs, it, I, I'm, I'm totally fine doing fewer videos that I work longer on. If that's what people prefer. Because I totally get, like, although this is mildly fun for me to play, it, it's just me doing the same thing over and over again. This is, this is a big ol' base. Yeah, the reinforcement distance is kind of long at this stage. And these guys have counterweight siege onagers, which is less than awesome. Things are going by relatively quickly. Some cook condo condo.
Okay, at the very least, let's get some you guys. Get one of you. Yeah, I mean, like, look at this army. It is like all gold units. <laughs> Build. Um. Go back a little ways. I don't know. Because, like, ah, like, this is just constant unit spam. And my biggest limiting factor is just how close I can get production buildings. explains where my population is. Oh, come on. Attacking wall segments? Really? I was like, why am I still at max pop? Onward and upward. <sighs> Stop attacking wall segments. Snipe the production buildings. Oh no. There's, oh, they're rebuilding that stuff. That's not good.
All right, looks like we're breaking them. Getting there. Construir. Oh my god, why? Why is this always the case in custom campaigns, man? It's like so much of the map is just taken up by impassable terrain. <laughs> like, I get wanting to make maps look nice, but... And I know Spain is mountainous, but still. You don't want this. Almost there. Ah, just one relic. Okay, just a few things left over here. Markets. Oh crap, do I need to Oh, uh you have won, Kings of Castilian Aragorn. Come to my palace, I surrender you and promise to leave the Iberian Peninsula forever. Hooray <laughs> Back to you know, what, five thousand plus units killed? Yeah, the Granada capital was definitely the strongest opponent. Guadix was the weakest, and the port cities somewhere in between. Ferdinand's army not doing so much. Research count 101. Research percent 105. We're so OP. Anyway, don't think there was really a whole lot going here to the north of the map. I mean, it's a really cool concept. Like, switching your player for, like, the different factions that each give different bonuses is really creative. It's just, you know, it's so grindy that I feel like it just takes away from a lot of it. Ah, that's just me. Anyway, uh, we're gonna need to go and IR winner this. During the ten-year arduous conquest of Granada, the two kings, Isabella and Ferdinand, spent most of their time at the two main Andalusian bases, Seville and Cordoba. The two dispatched soldiers, uh, the two dispatched soldiers and strategized, cooperated more and more tactic tacitly. 
and overcame a series of difficulties and challenges. Ferdinand is often the one who personally leads the troops to win, while Isabella observes the situation near the battlefield to control the details and formulate strategies. Many of the nobles and knights also heroically sacrificed their lives. Rodrigo Telegirion, uh, the king's lieutenant and grandmaster of the Order of Calatrava, was killed by an arrow during an attack on the fortress. Alonso de Cardenas, grandmaster of the Order of Santiago, was also killed during the capture of Granada. However, there were also those who showed their strengths in battle. The noble knight Gonzalo Fernandez de Cordoba, who had always been loyal to Queen Isabella, broke through the Moorish defenses by climbing to the top of the city with a ladder in the siege of Montefrio. His heroic performance soon made him promoted and was elected Grand Master of the Order of Santiago. By 1489, under the same religious banner, the Castilian army had become a cohesive force, and the harmony and high morale within the army was obvious. The soldiers came from all different parts of Spain, with all different dialects and customs, and yet these 80,000 infantry and 15,000 cavalry were united and loved their king. Z. In 1491, the city of Grenada was surrounded by the Spanish army and ran out of ammunition food. Ammunition and food. The desperate emir Abu Abdallah uh, had to choose peace talks. Gonzalo was sent as an emissary to the palace in Granada. And after promising to keep Abu Ad Abdullah safe and move him to North Africa, the last Granada monarch finally surrendered to the Spanish. In early 1492, Isabella and Ferdinand led an army into Granada. After Abu Abdallah handed over the keys of the city of Granada to the two Catholic kings, the Reconquista finally came to an end after more than 700 years of long disputes. After the loss and horror of the fall of Constantinople, the whole of the Christendom rejoiced again. Of course, what uh, they don't know yet is that Isabella's destiny to lead the European world had just begun. Alrighty, guys, that was Reconquista. So next up, I guess we'll be going to the New World in Conquest of Paradise. See you guys then.